All right, folks, we have a winner. This, the Mi 11 Ultra, is the best Android phone of 2021 in India. Well, my name is Ashad. you're watching My Smart Price, and here's why I think the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra is a masterstroke by the company in India. And you know what, while we're at it, we'll also compare it against the OnePlus 9 Pro and the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. But before we move on, I just want to say that as a country, we are going through some of the most toughest times that we've ever faced owing to this raging COVID-19 pandemic. So stay safe and mask up. It's the need of the hour. And to make this slightly easier for you, we've also created a few helpful resources on the My Smart Price blog, links to which should be in the description below. All right, and also uh, as a humble request, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it to get notified whenever my smart price puts out an awesome new tech video because we're trying to get to 100K as soon as possible. Now the Mi 11 Ultra is a chunky boy and owns its size as well. It reminds me of DJ Khalid, a big guy who's very comfortable in his skin. Hey, wait a second, that's me too. The Mi 11 Ultra looks pretty unique for the lack of a better word. The back of the phone is dominated by that massive, massive camera bump. But that bump packs in so much tech and a tiny display that I'm forced to forgive and forget. Now, if you discount the bump, the phone is only 8.4 millimeters thick, which makes it slimmer than the S21 Ultra and the OnePlus 9 Pro. However, at 234 grams, it is heavier than the S21 Ultra and the OnePlus 9 Pro. And a lot of this weight could be attributed to the fact that it uses ceramic instead of glass on the rear. Now, I'm sure you're wondering how are the ergonomics of this phone. Now, despite packing in a lot of girth on the top, it doesn't you know, tend to be too top heavy and is fairly good in the hand as well. Having said that, I feel that the S21 Ultra is still a far better balanced design of the three phones. And so is the OnePlus 9 Pro, but then it doesn't pack so much tech either. Now, between the white and the black color variants of the Mi 11 Ultra, I genuinely prefer the white one. It isn't as much of a fingerprint magnet and it's not as reflective either. The Mi 11 Ultra's black variant is so reflective that just on this variant, Xiaomi could have removed the rear display because I could frame myself by looking at the clean reflection on the mirror-like back of the phone. Plus, it is super slippery too. As for the rest of the design, you get an extremely nice and tactile set of power button and volume rocker. Plus, there are dual speakers tuned by Harman Kardon, which Xiaomi has proudly etched on the top edge. Also on the top is Xiaomi's now stable infrared scanner. As usual, you do not get a headphone jack, but Xiaomi does bundle a Type-C to 3.5mm jack in the box. That said, it is a major letdown that the Mi 11 Ultra has only a Type-C 2.0 port. It should have been a 3.0 port at least because you get 10 times faster transfer speeds. So yeah, the design of the Mi 11 Ultra is whimsical but cohesive and feels extremely premium to use as well. Having said that, I think that the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra is still the design of the year for me thanks to its awesome frosted glass back finish and especially in this stealthy black color, it looks absolutely stunning. Now for the you know OnePlus 9 Pro, it looks very similar and derivative of the design of last year's OnePlus 8 Pro, so it does nothing new per se. Also, most importantly, what you need to note is that nothing, absolutely nothing will prepare you for the heftiness of the Mi 11 Ultra. But that's okay considering the fact that Xiaomi packs in so much in this so-called super phone. The Mi 11 Ultra has one of the best displays on a smartphone out there. The 6.81 inch curved display gets supremely bright and the peak brightness of 1700 nits in HDR is the best in the industry. That's not it, it can also go up to 900 nits in regular usage. And the moment you take the phone out of the box, the curved panel is really going to stun you. It looks as impressive as the S21 Ultra and the OnePlus 9 Pro's already impressive displays, if not better. That said, I'm slightly disappointed by the stretched out bezels around the four corners. The high degree of curvature looks extremely odd and is bound to irritate anyone looking for design consistency. Furthermore, while you do get a very high 120Hz refresh rate coupled with a high touch response rate of 480Hz, it's not an LTPO panel, which means unlike the S21 Ultra and the OnePlus 9 Pro, the Mi 11 Ultra cannot cycle between different refresh rates. On a positive note, I do like the fact that MIUI has the option to define the size of the area around the edges to prevent accidental touches. It does come in handy. Now, when Xiaomi introduced the Mi 11 Ultra, the support for Dolby Vision made me jump with joy because currently this is the only Android phone that comes with Dolby Vision support. Although I didn't see the Dolby Vision stamp on Netflix like you do on the iPhone 12 series. What did work was a couple of Dolby Vision demo videos I downloaded and they looked absolutely fantastic. 
Although I did contact Xiaomi about the Netflix uh, Dolby Vision support on the phone and the company officials said that they're working with Netflix to bring support soon, so fingers crossed. Also fret not, the HDR video playback in general is gorgeous on this panel with its 1 billion color support as opposed to 16 million on most phones. There is no banding and the tonal range is just gorgeous too. It is the best Android phone display for watching Netflix, Prime and other streaming services. Yes, even better than the S21 Ultra and the OnePlus 9 Pro. The haptic feedback on the phone is good too, but the S21 Ultra continues to lead the pack of Android phones with extremely tight haptics. The optical in-display fingerprint scanner is fast enough but not as fast as the optical one on the OnePlus 9 Pro or the ultrasonic one on the S21 Ultra. By the way, the Mi 11 Ultra has the same awesome Corning Gorilla Glass Victus protection as the S21 Ultra. Oh, let's not forget the tiny 1.1 inch AMOLED panel on the rear. It can be used to capture pictures only in the photo mode and to showcase date, time notifications or a message of your choice that can be configured to your style. Now rounding out that multimedia experience is the stereo speaker setup specifically tuned by Harman Kardon and oh my god, it sounds so good, almost like a mini Bluetooth speaker but with a spacious sound. Yes, it can get loud but that's besides the point because it sounds clean, it sounds crisp, it sounds tight and it doesn't rattle the chassis either. You know what, take a listen for yourself. Plus the audio quality through a pair of earphones, thanks to the you know support for high res audio, is actually really really good as well. You know what? I kid you not. Despite having this massive 75 inch you know review unit of the new TV that Xiaomi launched, I watched a couple of episodes of Planet Earth on this phone itself because the multimedia experience was so great. By now we all know that the Mi 11 Ultra has the largest sensor ever used on a smartphone. I'm not gonna go into the specs, you can take a look at the comparison page on my smart price, which we will again link in the description below. But what I'll tell you is that the Mi 11 Ultra packs so many more camera features and modes when compared to the OnePlus 9 Pro. The 9 Pro and the Mi 11 Ultra share the tilt shift mode, but the Mi 11 Ultra has a vlog mode, movie effects, long exposure, multicam, magic zoom, and more. There's just a lot on offer here. Anyway, let's move on to my camera comparison between the Mi 11 Ultra and the OnePlus 9 Pro. But you guys must be wondering, but Ashad, where is the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra? I've already done a video between the two and you know, a card should pop up right now. Go check that out. Having said that, in that video, I specifically mentioned that I'll check the skin tones once again with an Indian unit of the Mi 11 Ultra. So I've done that for sure. Now, one more thing I need to mention over here, guys, is that I'm actually currently, you know, my apartment has been, you know, declared as a large outbreak region. So I really cannot step out of my house. So all of the camera samples are inside the house or looking out of the window. So please excuse me for that. I think you guys can understand it. Having said that, I think that I've done full justice nonetheless. Starting with the detailed retention first, the Mi 11 Ultra's 50 megapixel Samsung GN2 1 by 1.12 inch sensor captures extremely natural looking sharp details as opposed to the sharpened look of the OnePlus 9 Pro. The Mi 11 Ultra has a very DSLR like look when you look at you know, details in close crop compared to the 9 Pro's distinctly smartphone look. As for the dynamic range performance, there is no doubt in my mind that the Mi 11 Ultra looks way better. The OnePlus 9 Pro just crushes the shadow a lot. Take a look at the second sample where the Mi 11 Ultra captures the details in the visiting card sitting in front of the black pouch. It looks so clean and crisp at 100% crop. Now coming to the color reproduction, the OnePlus 9 Pro with its Hasselblad tuning gets the shade of green of this chair absolutely spot on and the denim blue shade of the cushion and the reds and the oranges inside it are all super accurate here. But yes, both the phones get the color of the toy extremely wrong. OnePlus turns it into an orangish hue whereas the Mi 11 Ultra makes it pinkish. The second color sample showcases the absolute spot on color accuracy of the OnePlus 9 Pro compared to the Mi 11 Ultra. Overall, I've noticed the color science of the OnePlus 9 Pro to be more accurate compared to the Mi 11 Ultra and it better be considering the Hasselblad partnership. All right, so when it comes to facial tones, the Galaxy S21 Ultra is just spot on with excellent details too. I feel OnePlus has nerfed the facial tones after the update. Post update, the camera performance seems to have deteriorated after so many people and critics complained. I'm really miffed. 
Anyway, the Mi 11 Ultra looks great too and doesn't have the same facial tone issue as the Chinese variant. But I could never get a tack sharp image as the S21 Ultra and my cheeks look pinker than normal. And with HDR on, the Mi 11 Ultra does a good job of exposing the face and controlling the highlights on the rear, but there is a distinctive tone mapped look with halo around the edges. The OnePlus 9 Pro actually does a good job here. By the way, the Mi 11 Ultra has an edge here considering you can frame the picture using the display on the rear. The portrait shot here looks good on the OnePlus 9 Pro, but the Mi 11 Ultra does a fantastic job of semantic segmentation where it has managed to retain the beard on my left cheek where OnePlus has cleanly wiped it out. Hey OnePlus, I didn't need a shave, <laughs> not yet at least. Selfies look more natural and pleasing on the Mi 11 Ultra. With HDR on, the Mi 11 Ultra again does a better job of controlling the highlights on the rear. Selfie portraits on the other hand are handled well on the OnePlus 9 Pro and they're actually equally good on both the phones whether you're shooting with the light falling on your face or if you're facing against it. Both the phones have extremely high resolution ultra wide angle cameras as well and the pictures look equally sharp and accurate. But the Mi 11 Ultra has a much wider lens with some clear distortion around the edges. The OnePlus 9 Pro benefits from the attached fee form lens that creates a far less pronounced distortion and looks straighter in comparison. Although you get a narrower field of view. The Mi 11 Ultra can do 5x telephoto whereas the OnePlus 9 Pro can do 3.3x. At 3.3x match, the OnePlus 9 Pro looks sharper. At 5x match, the Mi 11 Ultra has way more texture details. However, at 10x, which is for the zoom, the Mi 11 Ultra just decimates the OnePlus 9 Pro. And the Mi 11 Ultra can also go up to 120x digital zoom. That said, the S21 Ultra is still the king of zoom cameras on a phone in India. But macros are just way, way better on the OnePlus 9 Pro. The Mi 11 Ultra cannot focus on subjects at close crop. I had to actually use the 5x optical zoom to match the macro capture on the OnePlus 9 Pro and yet the 9 Pro is sharper here. Coming to the low light shots, I actually expected the Mi 11 Ultra to be way better but the OnePlus 9 Pro is actually pretty good too. But yes, the Mi 11 Ultra does offer better light sensitivity in non-night mode shots. In night mode shots, I actually love how OnePlus's natural looking nightscape mode makes textures crisper. It is very well done. In the second shot taken indoors, without night mode, the Mi 11 Ultra offers better noise control at, at close crop. And even with night mode on, there are no unnecessary added artifacts like you can see on the OnePlus 9 Pro. Take a very close look at the cushion on the left chair. You will see some added noise artifacts in between the cushion design pattern on the OnePlus 9 Pro, which is obviously not present on the Mi 11 Ultra. So yeah, the Mi 11 Ultra is better at low light shots, but not unequivocally so. Low light selfies on the contrary are leagues better on the Mi 11 Ultra. I also took a low light portrait and while the phones do a good job, the Mi 11 Ultra's edge detection is cleaner and the details are sharper too. Low light ultra wide shots look immediately more attractive on the OnePlus 9 Pro because it is one stop brighter. But honestly, the Mi 11 Ultra's contrasty natural rendition of the scene looks better at, at least to my eyes. I mean, here the result could be pretty subjective. Now, while the OnePlus 9 Pro doesn't support night mode on telephoto, surprisingly the quality of the telephoto shots were fantastic and comparable to the Mi 11 Ultra's telephoto shots with night mode on. Taking a look at the video performance, the Mi 11 Ultra's front camera can shoot up to 1080p 60fps videos and HDR videos up to 1080p 30fps resolution, albeit without stabilization. In both the scenarios, the Mi 11 Ultra's footage is more appealing compared to the OnePlus 9 Pro. Because the Mi 11 Ultra can shoot HDR video at 1080p uh, 30fps, which is great. And uh, that definitely shows us better HDR performance out here. Uh, you know, when you're looking at, uh, you know, the screen, it definitely does look better. And the crop factor is less because, of course, there is no stabilization. But I'm just running and the stabilization is better on, uh, you know, the... OnePlus 9 Pro but having said that you can get stabilization if you don't shoot in HDR so that's something that you need to note. Now both the phones can shoot 8K videos but the Mi 11 Ultra does it at 24fps as opposed to 30fps on the OnePlus 9 Pro. But the Mi 11 Ultra has an edge with HDR10 video capture straight out of the sensor. In fact the Mi 11 Ultra can also shoot HDR10 plus videos at 4K 30fps which the OnePlus 9 Pro cannot. Again a technical win here for Xiaomi. 4K 60fps video capture is better on the Mi 11 Ultra with better dynamic range, no exposure jumps, better detail and sound recording. This is what it looks like. Now I'm shooting directly uh, into the sun and you can see that the dynamic range performance is way better on the Mi 11 Ultra. Uh, uh, it doesn't darken the shadows as much as the OnePlus does uh, and this is what it looks like. Similarly, low light videos and extremely low light videos are tack sharp on the Mi 11 Ultra again. It just looks way cleaner with better noise control and brighter exposure as well.
So as for the camera performance, I actually prefer the Mi 11 Ultra over the OnePlus 9 Pro in most scenarios. I think that the Mi 11 Ultra does come out on top, but compared to the Galaxy S21 Ultra, the Samsung phone is actually more consistent and that could sway a lot of folks. But like I mentioned in that previous comparison, I am a sucker for like, you know, sharp details, which is why I sort of tend to go with the Mi 11 Ultra. Having said that, you could prefer the Galaxy S21 Ultra. The Mi 11 Ultra packing Qualcomm's latest Snapdragon 888 system on chip, 12GB of LPDDR5 RAM and 256GB of UFS 3.1 internal storage is also one of the most powerful phones we've tested here at MySmart Price. I mean the numbers speak for themselves. It scores highest on Android among the premium phones we've tested till now. The Geekbench numbers are fantastic too, but what's more important is that the Mi 11 Ultra doesn't throttle as much as the OnePlus 9 Pro or the S21 Ultra. Although that does mean that the Mi 11 Ultra does tend to get hot around the frames if you push the phone for performance. Surprisingly, it also cools down much faster though. I did notice that the phone did get hot after about a 30 minute session of Genshin Impact at 60 FPS, which is common on most Snapdragon 888 phones now. But it didn't break a sweat in Call of Duty Mobile. For all the mad hardware inside the phone, the Mi 11 Ultra runs MIUI 12 on top of Android 11 out of the box. This is the most responsive I've ever seen MIUI on a phone. It is snappy, smooth, and the animations just fly. Evidently, MIUI is a different beast on a flagship phone. Plus, you also get the same great MIUI 12 features such as floating windows, second space, super wallpapers, and glance for me notifications. Okay, that last one is not a fun addition. I'm not a fan of glances, lock screen ads, and wallpapers. I'll tell you that. Also, Xiaomi doesn't cut down on any first-party apps here. You still get the pesky Get App Store apart from the Google Play Store, which keeps sending notifications, and a few third-party apps such as, you know, Amazon, Prime Video, Facebook, LinkedIn, pre-installed. Thankfully, these can be deleted. By the way, the default phone and messaging apps are the Google Dialer app and Google Messaging app. Now, compared to One UI or Oxygen OS, MIUI 12 doesn't feel as polished or premium. I actually do prefer the sophisticated UI UX approach of those two operating systems for sure. Although I would have loved to see the Mi 11 Ultra run on you know, one of those two platforms, but that's definitely not happening. So I can make peace with MIUI 12 considering it is so well optimized on this phone. Regarding the battery and charging situation on the Mi 11 Ultra, let's get the obvious caveat out of the way. The, you know, nerfed 55 watt charger bundle inside the phone takes an hour and four minutes to charge from zero to 100. Now the 67 watt wired charger is definitely coming to India. Xiaomi has confirmed that. As for the 67 watt wireless charger, they're still evaluating if they should bring that to India or not. Uh, but the 55 watt charger inside the box is definitely faster than the 25 watt charger that you get the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. Therefore, it definitely has an edge. Having said that, of course, you know, the OnePlus 9 Pro with its 65 watt charger inside the box is faster to charge the phone. As for the battery life, I tested the phone in QHD plus resolution with 120Hz refresh rate, always on display, rear mini display on, and I got about five hours of screen on time, which is good enough. Now, like Marcus Brownlee said in his review of the B11 Ultra, the battery does die very quickly. And you know, there's a sudden dip when you are actually using the camera a lot, or, you know, putting it through intensive games as such and also the standby drain on the Mi 11 Ultra seems to be a lot as well. Now in comparison the OnePlus 9 Pro after the update has improved a lot in battery life and the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra has been great from the start itself because Exynos is actually throttled. Now as the wireless network performance the Mi 11 Ultra has all the bells and whistles that you come to expect from a modern day flagship. You get support for many 5G bands, there's support for 4G carrier aggregation as well. The call quality through the earpiece, you know, in Delhi when I tested it on the Airtel network is absolutely fantastic as well. And apart from that, you also get support for Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2. You couldn't ask for anything more. Now by price matching the Mi 11 Ultra to the OnePlus 9 Pro at Rs 69,990, Xiaomi India has issued a clarion call for a smartphone war. And to be entirely honest, the OnePlus 9 Pro doesn't stand a chance here. And you know, I cannot mince any words out here. Yes, the OnePlus 9 Pro's Oxygen OS could be more polished. Having said that, when it comes to the hardware aspects of these two phones, the Mi 11 Ultra is always one step ahead. And you can actually make peace with MIUI 12, considering the fact that it is so well optimized on this phone. Now, as for the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra comparison, which is actually a far more expensive phone, it does have a few things going for it. Most importantly, the fact that you get DeX support and Samsung Pay, which are exclusive to the Samsung ecosystem as well. And also, uh, it 
shoots better telephoto shots and the design is simply more refined as well. But by keeping the price low of the Mi 11 Ultra and also offering a few things better, for example, the low light performance, which is better, the video recording, which is better, and of course, the, the overall performance of the phone with Snapdragon 888, at least in India, is better than Exynos 2100 as well. There are obvious perks that cannot be overlooked. So yeah, I have no hesitation in calling the Mi 11 Ultra the best Android phone in India in 2021 until something better comes along. What do you guys think? My name is Ashad. You are watching My Smart Price. Until next time, goodbye and Godspeed, my friends.